Welcome to HowToWrench.com for another edition in our fuel systems playlist. We've had a lot of requests for years to do something on the uh, HSR Makunis. We love these HSR uh, Makuni carburetors. They're fantastic for what we use uh, on American V-Twins. We've been really happy with them, using them for a long time. So some of the things that we really like is the they're super tunable, so the slide is super adjustable. The accelerator pump is adjustable. We're going to talk about that in a second. You can swap out main jets really fast. So if you're doing a lot of dynoing or tuning or at the drag strip, that's pretty handy. But uh, this is just a, a, a just a great carburetor. And the honest truth of it is, it, my experience is they just work fantastic right out of the box. So once again, a big re reason we like them. Uh, as we as we move forward and we're using this manual and talking about things, you know, we want to try to do everything we can so that we don't have any problems. So like I said, the point of this video, we're gonna focus on what we can do on the bench to have it good and ready to go uh, on the motorcycle. There are some adjustments you have to do on the bike. We're going to focus on some of these key points, like making sure there's no, like I said, shipping materials in the carb. We're gonna make sure all the passages are good and clear. We'll go ahead and uh, check the, the jets that are in here, document it, put it on the work order just to verify what should be in there. We're also gonna check that they're all tight you know, and snugged up appropriately. And then we're gonna do two tests uh, to show you that. We'll do what's called a dry test to make sure the needle and seat are working. We'll check the float height, show you how to uh, set and adjust that. And then the final thing we'll do is we're gonna do what we call a wet test. We'll actually put fuel to this, uh, verify on the bench that it doesn't have any leaks before we install on the bike or ship off to the customer. So uh, let's go ahead and keep on going on this then. This is one that surprises most people. A lot of times with customers they'll say, yeah, I got this new carb, I put it on, then they have these problems. So I go, did you check it for leaks before you put it on? Well, no, it's brand new. Why would I? Well, I want to talk about why you should. I mean, you got to think about not all of these are so perfectly packaged or whatnot. Um, this one was nice. It actually came with just paper, but sometimes you get it and it's full of packing peanuts. Well, a little bit of fuel from maybe, uh, you know, assembly, something, whatever, gets on there and deteriorates that, that's no good, and that'll get into passageways. I mean, the carburetor itself has plenty of openings for something to get into. The big bad one would be the fuel inlet. We're also gonna follow the recommendations by McCooney on how to set this new carburetor up on the bench and what we should think about as far as the accelerator pump and cable connections to make it that much easier for tuning it once it's on the vehicle. I'm going to go ahead and I'll put a link because this book is free all over the place. There's digital copies. I'll put a link on uh, how you can access this yourself or you can go to McCooney's website and get one too. As you've seen numerous times in the videos How to Wrench, I can't stress enough resources, service manuals, and just doing it right the first time. So let's get in close with the camera, get a close up, and look at the things that we should pay attention to on the HRSs. And it doesn't matter if you're doing a 42, a 45, or a 48, you know, today those are the popular ones that are available. Uh, everything we're going to do is based on those and similar practices on a bunch of other carburetors. So let's get started. The McCooney HSR owners and tuning manuals fantastic for that uh, do-it-yourself or tech that might just not be super familiar with this. So they're going to talk about uh, how you can use this manual to actually tune it for your bike. That way if you have different exhaust cams so on, it's going to be useful. But basically to, to just get it to, uh, to work on your setup. One thing that they're going to make a big deal about, as would I with, with any bike, but especially Harley-Davidson V-Twins is going to be the fact of checking that intake manifold to make sure that there's no leaks. I can't stress enough that in my opinion, it's so easy to check and just go ahead and replace the intake seals on a Harley Davidson when you have the carb already, already off. Now, unless you know that they're done recently, you need to ask yourself, you know, how old are they? Not, hey, my bike's an 06. Just say, hey, yeah, okay, they're, you know, an 06, the, the seals, if had they never been touched, would be 19 years old. So. Think about what happens to rubber over a long time. Great idea just to go ahead and make them new. I'll put a link to a video I have on how to do that on your Harley Davidson uh, or your uh, American V-Twin engine so that we can have the integrity on that not be an issue because no amount of tuning you do on any of the other jets will fix intake seals other than leaking intake seals other than just make the fuel consumption go to crap and not have the power output that you want. So. What we're going to focus on here next is the accelerator pump setting. So if we turn to page six of this manual, 
we're going to go ahead and, and use that manual to set and check out where this accelerator pump is hitting that rod when you open the throttle right now. So there's a procedure here. McCooney says with screw one, screw two, the accelerator pump has two adjustments. Uh, one replaceable tuning part. That's going to be found inside the carburetor in here, that nozzle. So the size of the accelerator pump nozzle determines fuel flow rate, but the two screws adjust when the pump starts action and when it stops. Screw 1 figure T4 adjusts the starting position, and screw 2 is the stopping position. The total amount of fuel injected is determined by the position of those two screws. Screw 1 uh, on the throttle lever adjusts the starting point. To start the pump sooner, smaller throttle opening back the screw out. To start it later, screw it in. Screw 2 adjusts the pump's end point. So to do this adjustment, we're going to go ahead and see where this hits as it would be on the motorcycle. Do you hook up your throttle cables? And then we would go put the tape on the throttle tube and then be able to identify where is that starting and stopping. So we would want to go ahead and focus our adjustment on screw two. So right there we could see the screw where it hits the cam and that's the end stroke or that's the stop of it. So if we move that up or down, we're going to affect when that actually hits that. And they're saying that we want that to stop between two thirds and three quarter of a throttle. Pretty simple adjustment, but that's something that we will do uh, on the motorcycle to, uh, to dial that in. I'm gonna go ahead here and take the bowl off. Like I said before, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure there's no junk or any crap in here. This thing's spotless clean like we had hoped, but nice to be able to check it out. So to properly set the float height, you want to rock the carb until the float just touches the needle but does not depress it. Okay, if I go down like this, it can sink down because it's got that, that vibration dampener on the needle. It's another great design of the Makuni carburetor there of having that cushion so as the bike is vibrating and shaking it tends to last longer. So we want to go until that just kisses. One thing that you'll see common in a lot of carburetors is the relationship of this float pin and the float arm is 90 degrees or another way to look at it is you'll see that this float body here, anything you can see that's flat, is quite often the same parallel plane as the body of the carburetor, but not always. And this one in particular is a little bit proud or a little bit this way. So we're gonna see what the spec is and I'll show you how we'd actually measure that. We'll take our veneer caliper and they say that we want 18 millimeter and it could be plus or minus two millimeter. So that means it can be 16 to 20. I tap that in. I'm going to use 18 as a base. Okay. I'll lock this down. And now that 18 that I set on there is going to be on the back side here. The length of that, uh, excuse me, the length protruding there out of the caliper to this flat surface, that is set at 18 millimeters. And that's what we're going to use. So we go back to the float itself and I find that sweet spot where it just dances and I take and I basically drag this three. If you notice the float does not depress and I'm going to physically pull this up to my face here and when I pull it off camera and make sure there's no gap between the tool and this. So if I come across here and that float were to move that would mean that I was higher than 18. Now remember it says I can be 18 plus or minus 2 millimeter, but we set it at the base. Now, if I go across here and there's a big gap in between there, I might want to reset my tool and keep going down and find out what that gap is actually is just until it just skates across the highest point on the float. And this is how you set the majority of floats on about anything you can imagine. A lot of people want to do this. They set the carburetor like that. Now watch this. If I go across here, do you see the huge gap in there? Because it's depressed. That is not how you set it. So if I, if I set this, I'll show you in a second here. If I set this to 18 upside down on the bench, 
If I set this upside down on the bench to 18 millimeter, I am 100% going to get the wrong result. I'm going to be way, 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 way too lean and I'll be shutting that fuel off way too soon from where it's really supposed to be. So once again, you got to know what you're doing and read your service manual properly. So tip one, that's how you check it. Now here's what you need to do too. You need to flip that around and make sure and do both sides because you can get floats you could get floats that are bent or twisted or cocked. There, there's a, all kinds of different variations of where something could be wrong. So we want to hold the carb correctly, but just to make sure we're clear on this. We want this height to here, 18 millimeters, this height to here, 18 millimeters, with the float just touching but not depressing that float valve. So that is how you actually check that. Now let's say that we were off, okay? What we do then, it's, it's better to remove this screw because what we're going to do is we're going to adjust that little tab right there. We're going to bend that tab, that part of it that the float needle is resting on, up or down to change this relationship here to get that setting per the service manual for anything you're working on. So let's put this into an application so you can understand it. Let's say that it wasn't 18 millimeters when we checked it in the right position. Let's say it's all the way down here. So that means that that float is too low, which is a rich condition and which is common to as that float needle wears, this will usually sink down causing a rich condition. To get the float up to where it should be, I'd take that tab and I would bend it down closer to the needle, which would, in essence, raise the float. Then I would go back. After any adjustment, go back, recheck your work, and make sure that you haven't altered it too much. So. I'd go and I'd, and do small increments. We don't want to be bending this like crazy. It is metal, and what happens to metal when you bend it back and forth a bunch of times, eventually it fatigues and it can break. So use some caution and some craftsmanship on this. So I'd go, I'd bend that, and I'd keep doing it until I get my 18. <clears throat> Let's flip it. Let's say you get in there and it's really high like this. We, you know, we'll, we'll see carbs like this where people just misadjusted them. 99% of the time, it's they use the wrong parts and they're not using original equipment or something that's goofy and it'll get way out of whack. So if this is way up here, to correct that situation, so I would take that tab and I would bend it up, which would allow the float to start working its way back down and then just keep checking it at that you know specification. Once I'm happy with all that and the float is set where it's supposed to, that's where I start to do the testing to just see if there's any kind of integrity. The first thing I'm gonna do is take high quality screwdrivers and verify that all the jets themselves are tight. I don't want something rattling apart on a V-twin and falling off down the inside. I'm also going to go ahead while I'm in there and looking at it, I'm going to document the sizes of the jets so that I know what's in there. That way if down the road I, I'm not happy with something, I want to make a change, all I have to do is go to my, my work order, my record, and go, man, my, you know, my low RPM throttle is sluggish or whatnot, and I want to you know, try and fix that through jetting. I would go and then look at that and go, okay, I have this size jet, so here's what I would need to do to change that. So really good idea to document that. Main jet, uh, pilot jet, a lot of people call this the slow speed jet. Uh, this little tube right here is what supplies fuel to the choke or the starting circuit. Uh, this little accelerator, or excuse me, this little brass jet right here with threads on it, this is that removable and sizable piece on the accelerator pump that we were talking about out of the manual. You can see where that goes up into here. We're going to physically test the capability of that to work here when we do our wet test too. We're actually going to force it to actually shove fuel through there and know that it functions before we try and stick it on the bike. But once again, that's serviceable. A little note of caution, when you go to install these, uh, they're just uh, O-ringed in there and, and pressed in. You need to make sure and turn that, name that, so the hole is facing down the throat or into the carburetor. If you flip that and hat backward into the air box, that is not going to help you, my friend. Um, so make sure that you understand the installation of that, uh, that the hole will face down through the carburetor throat. Okay, let's go ahead and do the dry test right now. To do the dry test, I'm going to go ahead and use a Mighty Back tester. I'll get close here in a second. I'm going to just hook it up to the fuel inlet. And then I'm going to show that it actually has the ability to build some pressure in there, just like 5 PSI, and that it'll hold and that's not dropping. If it's dropping, that means there's a leak. If there is a leak, 
I could take some soapy water, spray it around there, and then find my actual source of the leak as well. It might just simply, like I said, be junk from packaging or from actually assembly that just the smallest piece of crap gets in there, it's going to leak. So let me hook the tool up and then I'll get closer. So we're hooked up to the line and one thing that's a really good idea is to check your tool is before you hook up to the carburetor just go ahead and pump it up and verify it has the ability to to hold anyway. As we can see right away with this this brand new carburetor I could go ahead and pump this up and I can see two things that will happen. Number one is I can figure out what the the pop-off pressure is. You can see right around 6 psi or so it actually physically pushes the the float up. So we got a couple things good there happening here. I'll just go ahead and get this set. So in our dry test, what we're doing is we're making sure that that just stays and that it's not slowly leaking. I'll go ahead and pop this off, okay? And you can see what's going on. One, two, three. And we can do that a couple times, just we want to make sure nothing's in there. Now, let's say this was leaking, okay? So one thing you can do that's kind of cool with this tool is just go ahead and hold the float up and then just you know, pump this up and there might be a piece of junk in there that'll push its way through. I can't stress enough, it'd be best practice to go ahead, pull apart, clean it, put it back together. All right, so we're holding good. Life is good. We don't need to take anything apart. This brand new carburetor is doing everything it's supposed to do. I know that my customer is not going to have any problems. I'm going to go ahead, document what I need to, and come back in a second and we're going to do the wet test. Check that. Here, I got this handy little uh, IV stand that I put a little portable small engine gas tank on. And this works really slick for uh, doing carburetor uh, wet testing. As you can see, I have my fuel source supplied to the carburetor. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. You can see fuel running out. It's a great idea to go ahead and crack the drain loose and actually make it leak to show that the carburetor filled all the way up. So I'm going to do that. And then like I said, I'm going to force it to actually leak. Okay, we're starting to get some fuel out of there. Start to see it drip, so I'm going to tighten this back up. I'm going to zoom in the camera and then finish the wet test. All right, at this point, if you got some more things to do, you got to be careful working with fuel. Let's not forget about that. But we want to take and let this sit and make sure no leaks are going to develop. We're staying especially focused around the bowl gasket, around that changeable main jet. And then if the float wasn't doing its job, you would have something coming out of this overflow hose, a drip over some time, and that would tell you that it, it doesn't have the ability to shut off with any kind of weight to it from the portable fuel tank or from your gas tank. So that's what we would do there. We're going to go ahead and move on to what we would think of as our last test before we're ready to uh, install the, the choke cable and ship off to the customer and install the bike. We're going to go ahead and we're going to move forward to proving that the accelerator pump is working. Now what you're going to notice when you put a new carb on a bike, we've got to basically prime the system. So where I showed you the carburetor apart before, there's air in that accelerator pump and it's probably going to take a few times to get the uh, pump to prime, but what we should see happening is we should see fuel running out of this into the, the throat of the carburetor like it would run down the motorcycle. I really like to do that to prove that it can work. Let's change the uh, angle of this. I don't want to try and get it everywhere. This does shoot surprisingly long way. I'm going to go ahead and just basically operate the throttle here. So that's, you know, three pumps or so. Yep, I already got fuel pouring out there. Let's get a close-up of that. Now watch this. Can you see it starting to shoot here? I'll try and block it here. So you can see the spray coming out. Alright, that's great. We want that. That tells us a couple things. That that jet's in there, that nozzle's facing the right way. We're going to shoot down the throat and that the system has the ability to prime and function as designed. You can see some other videos I have on the channel where we've actually taken the time to see how far this will shoot. 
All right, all of our testing on this carburetor is done. So we're going to drain the fuel and then move to choke cable considerations and installations. All right, what we're going to focus on next is uh, choke cable. Like the manual says, you can use the stock Harley-Davidson choke cable. I'm a big fan of going to the aftermarket one just because the stock Harley cable is plastic and this is metal, so you can really lock these two down and get a really good firm mount. I like the metal. So just some personal preference there. I'll have a link to this cable in the uh, description of the video below too. So, But there are some things we have to really be concerned about. And once again, go back to referencing the manual. Because on the carburetor itself, the parts look really similar to the Harley carburetor, the stock one, but they're not. So we want to make sure we're going to remove this choke. 12 millimeter. It's going to be a spring and a plunger in here that we need to use. If using your stock cable, you have to use these Makuni components with your cable. So it explains in the manual why it doesn't work with the stock ones, but we're going to go ahead and hook these up right now. On your cable itself, we want to slide the nut through. And a big thing that people get into trouble is they don't get this cable, whether aftermarket or stock, to fully seat. That's very, very important. As you swing and route this around on the motorcycle, that needs to be bottomed. If it's not bottomed in there, it's holding the choke open and going to make the bike run really rich. Foul plugs have all kinds of problems. So we'll slide on the spring next. Then just kind of compress that. Hold that with your fingers like so. And then loop the cable through. And you'll see how that spring landed on that little ledge right there. We're be good to go. I like to lubricate this. You know, whether you start with some fuel out or you get some uh, Vaseline and put a little spit on it, get it wet when you install it. Then we go ahead and we just re-thread it just as we took it out. On this particular carburetor, it's a 12 millimeter. Now the cap is still plastic; it can be easy to cross-thread, so do not do that. Here's a little tip for you. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get the carb firmly mounted against the bench. Now I can't stress enough to try and do this by hand to get that sweet spot and it should be no effort. Look, I can twist out my fingers with no effort. If you start getting on here at the wrench, I'm telling you, you're going to cross thread it, you're going to have a problem. So let's go ahead and get that all the way kissed up. Everything's going good. Life's looking good. And I'm just going to give it a little snug. Remember, it's plastic, but there's a O-ring seal on there. Then what we want to do is we want to take, we want to make sure, remember how I was talking that this needs to be fully seated. You can even operate the cable here. You can even operate it and make sure that it's opening and closing. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and have that fully seated. Then I'm going to take this rubber seal. When done right, this seal will be over the end of this nipple right here. Okay. If you're just leaving it like this, you can see where that'll just sit and flop around. So we need to get that over that. Put a little lube on there or something to make the job a little easier. Do is get started and then just kind of swing the cable. Around. And you'll get to a point where it'll, it'll just pop into place. Okay, so I'm not on on the back side, so watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and loosen this back up. Okay. And see how see how I'm not on? If I would have just quit, I, I'm not doing it fully. I'm going to have a problem. So now what I can do is actually get to it. There we go. Okay. Then with this on here now, I can hold the cable and do whatever. I can go back to... Full installation, get that snug, and you can see there that, that that seal is in place, and it's going to be a lot harder for this to be out of place or where it shouldn't be. You know, for our customer, he's going to be installing this on a Harley Davidson as a replacement carburetor, and some of you may need this part as well, this Makuni uh, air filter adapter. And what this thing does that's really cool is this allows you to put numerous different 
uh, air filter designs that were meant to mount to a stock carburetor. This allows you to mount that back up. And you already had an aftermarket high flow air filter system on there. All you need is this bracket and this will get the size, the width of that carburetor base back to just 100% OEM stock size and then you can just bolt it right on. So way cool adapter. Like I said, I'll have the link to this uh, below in the description. The other thing I want you to think about is on this cable, routing is going to be super important. So if we look at you know the the air filter side and the engine side we know that this is going to go this direction you can't take this cable and bend it like crazy around without causing some some problems with that cable so make sure you're using some caution what you do with that as well well that my friends that's it that is a, a great way how to set up a Makuni hsr carburetor so you're going to have the least amount of problems as you go and put it on the bike i i would suggest that you carry this uh, these procedures with any carburetors you're doing bench test them know that they're good and you're not going to have those issues please like share subscribe to this channel all these free videos are supported by uh you youtubers passing on our work and uh, getting the getting the subscribers up for us we got some big goals for 2019 hope you enjoyed this video stay tuned hit that bell keep wrenching and we'll talk to you again soon